The third symbolic age allegedly is the age of Pisces, the two fish. They claim that because Jesus fed 5,000 people with bread and two fish, and because Jesus befriended two fishermen who followed him, that this must be symbolic of the age of Pisces. Actually, four of Jesus' disciples were fishermen, not just two. Though four disciples were fishermen, what about other followers of Jesus? Matthew, for instance, was a tax collector, Simon was a zealot, Luke was a physician and historian, Paul was a Pharisee and a tent maker. What is their significance to astrology? They have none. And I think we have all seen the Jesus fish on the back of people's cars. Little do they know what it actually means. It is a pagan astrological symbolism for the sun's kingdom during the age of Pisces. Actually, the fish symbol was an identifying symbol for Christ, which early persecuted Christians used, and it has nothing to do with the age of Pisces. The Greek word ichthus for fish is an acrostic based on the initials of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Indeed, Jesus fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread, but he later fed 4,000 people with a few fish, or more fish than two fish, and seven loaves of bread. Obviously, Zeitgeist does not quote this event because it does not fit their paradigm. According to Zeitgeist hermeneutic, it could just as easily be called the age of bread, but there is no such thing. Jesus also healed people, gave sight to the blind, raised the dead, walked on water, and cast out demons of people, but there is no astrological ages accompanying these miracles. Besides, fish and fishermen are also mentioned in the Old Testament, which predated Jesus and was prior to the age of Pisces. New Testament stories also refer to a rooster, doves, donkeys, birds, camels, sheep and goats, yet none of these animals would normally fall under the age of Pisces, like fish. In Luke chapter 22 verse 10, Jesus tells his disciples to enter into the city where they will meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. Acharya S. and Zeitgeist claim this is a symbolic foreshadowing of the age of Aquarius, or the water bearer. How the text conveys foreshadowing one cannot say, except for Acharya S. Acharya goes farther than Zeitgeist claiming Jesus was baptized in Aquarius, the water bearer, hinting that Jesus will bring in the age of Aquarius. But the age of Aquarius begins around AD 2150, so how exactly was Jesus baptized in Aquarius? Acharya S. then claims that Jesus became the Good Shepherd and the Lamb in Aries the Ram, Aries, from about 2150 BC to AD 1, which has already been attributed to Moses, is now attributed to Jesus, but has nothing to do with Jesus, just as it had nothing to do with Moses. A lamb is not a ram, and has nothing to do with shepherding sheep. The only parallel here is that they are animals. This is a wild generalization. She goes on to state that Jesus told parables of the sowing and tilling in the fields in Taurus the bull. Acharya has now attributed all four of these ages to Jesus somehow, but which one is it? To these critics, any mention of bulls is automatically accredited to the age of Taurus, any mention of animals to the age of Aries, any reference to fish to the age of Pisces, and any reference of water to the age of Aquarius. You would think that there would be much less broad and cryptic references if this were the reality and the intention of the writers of the Bible. Jesus told parables and several agricultural metaphors, including fig trees, wheat and tares, sheep and goats, seeds, and many others. But there is no supposed symbolic age for these parables. Obviously, Bible stories will abound with fish, because fish were the most common source of protein near the Sea of Galilee. Now, we have all heard about the end times and the end of the world. The cartoonish depictions in the book of Revelation aside, the main source of this idea comes from Matthew 28:20, 20, where Jesus says, I will be with you even to the end of the world. However, in the King James Version, world is a mistranslation, among many mistranslations. The actual word being used is eon, which means age. I will be with you even to the end of the age, which is true as Jesus' solar Piscean personification will end when the sun enters the age of Aquarius. The entire concept of end times and the end of the world is a misinterpreted astrological allegory, 
Let's tell that to the approximately 100 million people in America who believe the end of the world is coming. Peter Joseph alleges that the main source for the Christian idea of the end of the world comes from Matthew 28:20, 20, but this passage has nothing to do with Christian views of the end of the world. Rather, a complete thematic treatment of the passages concerning the end of the world make up most Christian views which, for the most part, agree that Jesus will return as a thief in the night in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that don't know God, and the earth will be burned up. Indeed, the word world in the King James Bible is translated to aeon in the Greek, or age. This word means forever, an unbroken age, perpetuity of time or eternity. Jesus was not referring to any astrological age like Aquarius or Pisces. He was referring to the end of the world or the end of the times as we know it. The Greek word aeon was used again by Jesus in reference to the end of the world when he said, The harvest is the end of the world, or aeon, and the reapers are the angels. In Luke chapter 1 verse 70, Jesus refers to God's holy prophets which have been since the world, or aeon, began. God's prophets, such as Moses, did not live in the astrological age of Pisces as Jesus, yet Jesus includes them in this passage. It is obvious Jesus is not referring to an astrological age here. Paul stated in Romans 12:2, Do not be conformed to this world or aeon, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, he is referring to time since the world began until it ends. The Bible also says, The world or aeon passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. The amount of time it takes for the procession to go through all 12 signs is roughly 25,765 years. This is also called the Great Year. And ancient societies were very aware of this. The narrator Peter Joseph makes sure to say that ancient societies were very aware of this because Zeitgeist's whole premise and theory is dependent upon the ancients acknowledging the astronomical concept to which they refer. However, modern astrological beliefs are not identical to the ancient astrological beliefs and Zeitgeist's argument regarding the various astrological ages is irrelevant. Historian of science and winner of the Genius Award from the MacArthur Foundation, Dr. Noel Swerdlow's response to Acharya's claims in Zeitgeist are as follows. In antiquity, constellations were just groups of stars, and there were no borders separating the regions of one from the region of another. The modern ideas about the age of Pisces or the age of Aquarius are based upon the location of the vernal equinox in the regions of the stars of those constellations. But the regions, the borders between those constellations are a completely modern convention of the International Astronomical Union for the purpose of mapping, and never had any astrological significance. I hope this is helpful, although in truth, what this woman is claiming is so wacky that it is hardly worth answering. So when this woman says that the Christian fish was a symbol of the coming age of Pisces, she is saying something that no one would have thought of in antiquity. Because in which constellation of the fixed stars the vernal equinox was located was of no significance and is entirely an idea of modern, I believe, 20th century astrology. The borders of constellations between, say, Aries, Pisces, and Aquarius are modern conventions of the International Astronomical Union. And there is nothing ancient about them. The Bible is nothing more than an astrotheological literary hybrid, just like nearly all religious myths before it. Most people with a basic knowledge of the Bible would immediately see the fallacies and contradictions in these arguments. For example, the Bible and Jesus are clearly not hidden allegorical prescriptions for a sun and star worship, because in Genesis chapter 1, God created the sun, moon, and stars. A further distinction is in Deuteronomy chapter 4 where God specifically forbids the Israelites to worship the sun and stars as the Egyptians did. Through the prophet Isaiah, God mockingly asked if the stargazers could actually protect those who follow them from the real power and maker of the universe. In the book of the prophet Ezekiel, God showed to Ezekiel in a vision 25 men of Judah in the inner court of the temple worshiping the sun rather than God. God considered this an abomination. Additionally, in 2 Kings chapter 23 verse 5, the priests who burned incense to the sun, to the moon, and to the planets were called idolatrous priests. 
Not one of these scriptures are referenced in Zeitgeist because it would destroy their argument, distinguishing clearly between the celestial bodies and the creator of them. The origin of Christianity arose out of Judaism, which denounced these practices all throughout the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there is the story of Joseph. Joseph was a prototype for Jesus. Joseph was born of a miracle birth. Jesus was born of a miracle birth. Joseph was of 12 brothers. Jesus had 12 disciples. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Brother Judah suggests the sale of Joseph. Disciple Judas suggests the sale of Jesus. Joseph began his work at the age of 30. Jesus began his work at the age of 30. The parallels go on and on. Here, Zeitgeist's case is very misleading. Though God opened Rachel's womb, it's difficult to consider the birth of Joseph a miracle birth like that of Jesus, who was divine and born of a virgin. Indeed, Jesus had 12 disciples, but Joseph only had 11 brothers. There is no parallel. Though Judas suggested the sale of Joseph, it was Midianite merchantmen that sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites as a slave. Jesus, on the other hand, was not sold, but betrayed by Judas, who was paid 30 pieces of silver by the Jews. Jesus did begin his ministry at age 30, but Joseph began his prophetic ministry receiving dreams from God at age 17. The age 30 for Joseph is mentioned in Genesis, but the Bible simply says, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Aside from Zeitgeist parallels being inaccurate, the simple fact that there are parallels between Jesus and other people in the Bible like Joseph does not make either of them fictional. 